Have you ever wished your intranet could do more than just display info? What if your team could request access, submit tickets, or update records without ever leaving SharePoint? I'm Allison Gonzalez, I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Primatic Works, and in this video, we are diving into why embedding Power Apps into SharePoint is such a smart move. And what do you need to know to do it right? Power Apps lets you take SharePoint beyond documents and lists. When you embed an app on a SharePoint page, you turn a passive intranet into a two-way tool. Users can interact with data, they can submit forms, and they can trigger workflows right where they already work. Before embedding any app, you need to understand licensing. If your Power App only uses SharePoint as a data source, your users are covered by their standard Microsoft 365 license. However, if your app connects to premium sources, for example, Dataverse, a SQL, or other custom connectors, you will need a higher level license to incorporate that. And that licensing applies even if the app is embedded inside of the SharePoint page. Embedding an app in Power Apps is not a workaround to try to use it and get away with putting data somewhere that you really should not be. Embedding does not bypass your permissions, right? You still need access to that data. So in addition to reviewing your connector types in Power Apps, you also want to make sure that your app is stored in a location or an environment that your end users will have access to. You also need to make sure that that environment is a sharing environment and make sure that it is not in a personal developer environment or like a sandbox or test environment. We really want to make sure that it is actually in an environment that is marked for production and that the users that need to see that app have access to that content. They can't see it. They can't access it in Power Apps. They're not going to have access to it in SharePoint. If users are seeing a blank app or they are getting errors, is often that permissions mismatch that has occurred. And also keep in mind that SharePoint list structure and Power Apps are tightly connected. If you rename a column or change its type, it can easily break your app if you're using that SharePoint list as your app data source. So you need to make sure that your site owners in SharePoint and your app makers and Power Apps are working together before making any changes. Another thing to consider is that if your SharePoint site is public internal to your organization, but that Power App should be a limited audience, make sure you're embedding that with care and testing the permissions on any non-admin users to make sure that no one is seeing information that they shouldn't, but the people that do need it have access to it. So let's dive in and actually see how we're able to do this process now that you understand why as well as what to consider when you're doing this. On a SharePoint site that you want to add your app to, go ahead and add it to either an existing page or to a new page. Now keep in mind, if you add it to an existing page and you have a lot of other elements already on that page, your page load time is going to slow down, going to take up some space. So I definitely suggest using a limited amount of other content in addition to that power up on a page or even having that power up on its own page to really ensure that everyone's seeing the content that they need as quick as possible. I'm going to go ahead and add this to a new page. So I'm going to go with new and then page. And I am going to select one of these. Prior test does not really matter. This one looks like like fun. Once you have a page loaded, either one you're editing that you already have existing or a new page that you're going to add additional content into, go ahead and on the section wherever you would like to put that or even adding in a new section, we'll go with a one column section, you're going to come over here into your toolbox. And in your toolbox, you have your web parts, right? Your web parts are enabling you to bring in anything from text and pictures, news sections, but also we have power apps. Of course, I use mine, so it's in there frequently used, but you can just search in that search bar, search the word power, and we will see here is power apps. You can also embed Power BI, and we also have the video here on our channel, and I will link that below if you're curious on the process. It's very similar to the power apps process that we're going to do right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select our power apps web part. And now for this to work, all we need to do is get the app web link or its ID, right? So we can point to the app we want. 
Now, this is an app that I am using, and this app is in my personal environment, right? My personal environment is not one of the approved sharing places, but I can use it for this demo. But we are going to get a nice little message across the top when we do that telling us, hey, you have not used a correct environment for that. So if you do this accidentally later on, you can easily see, oh, I got to make sure I'm moving my app so it works correctly. We have our sharing icon. We can click that sharing icon. Notice we've got all these little alerts. Hey, say, hey, this is a developer environment. It is not for production, right? This app contains data that might require additional permissions. So we got some warnings there. Make sure you're paying attention when you are doing this with your apps that they are coming from the correct location. People have the correct levels of access in Power Apps. And then we can move that to SharePoint. We're going to go ahead and copy the link. Once that link is copied, you can come back to your SharePoint page, paste that link in, let it load up. And here we go. We now have our app right here on our SharePoint site. Can I have my little reminder that mine's coming from a developer environment? We definitely would want to move this to a regular environment that everyone has access to, or at least all the people that need to have access to for this. But I'm able to use this app just like I could if I was coming from Power Apps. But the benefit, of course, is that my end audience is here. They do not need to open another program. And SharePoint truly can be that centralized hub, that one-stop shop for everything and every program that your team is utilizing here in one place. Now that our app is added, we of course could make any other changes we would want to this page. And then of course, we would want to make sure we are going to publish to make this page and the changes we put in visible to all users of our SharePoint site. Embedding Power Apps into SharePoint really is one of the most effective ways to modernize your internet and simplify that internal process. But it only works well when you align the tech, right? Making sure they have the permissions and abilities to see the data and use the app in Power Apps, as well as see the SharePoint site and have access to the page that it is on. Paying attention to that licensing and all of your end users will ensure that this is successful. If you found this helpful, hit like and subscribe for more admin tips. And let me know in the comments, what Power Apps have you embedded into your SharePoint sites? What worked well? And also what surprised you? I'll be in those comments, checking them out, having some convos, and hopefully I will see you there. And also don't forget if you want to learn more more about SharePoint and go much more in depth, head over to our on-demand platform. We have a ton of SharePoint sites over there, including a SharePoint automation class that goes a lot more in depth on this topic.